Hey guys, I'm over here at the Dodge dealership and I want to find out why this guy behind me is the worst selling car in the US. Well, it depends how much you're into the car world. You may not even know this car exists. So this is the Dodge Hornet. Now, Dodge have struggled in the past years with different models of smaller cars or SUVs and um, their most famous car lately was was the Dodge Charger, the Dodge Challenger. And um, well, Dodge is discontinuing those. That's not entirely true. We are getting electrified versions of these. And in the future, there will be gas powered small displacement using the Hurricane architecture. So for the meantime, if you want a Dodge car, small SUV, CUV as they call it, you can buy the Hornet. And saying this, let's get into what the Hornet is. The name Hornet has a long history with US car manufacturers. It started with Hudson, later Hudson merged with Nash, and the name was used again when they created AMC. This time around, this is not the case. This car you're seeing here is actually an Italiano. Yes, it is made by an Italian company. And actually this car is a mechanical twin to Alfa Romero Tona Tonale. Yes, I got it right. Alfa Romero Tonale. So Stellantis, the parent company of these Dodge, Chrysler, and Fiat, and similar, they're actually the ones manufacturing this car. While we're on the topic of manufacturing, let's see what is under the hood. So there are two trims, essentially. There's a GT and the RT, which is the top spec. The GT has a 2.0 liter turbocharged four cylinder, which is run through a nine speed automatic transmission. This puts out 268 horsepower, 295 pound feet of torque. Both the GT and RT comes with all wheel drive. The RT is a plug-in hybrid. It has a 1.3 liter four cylinder turbocharged engine. It also has a 90 kilowatt electric motor in the back with a 15.5 kilowatt battery. It runs through a six speed automatic transmission. The electric only mode is good for 32 miles. This puts out 288 horsepower and 383 pound feet of torque. Now, the suspension up front, you have McPherson strut type front suspension and Chapman, Chapman strut type rear suspension. Sorry, that was a mouthful. This car weighs in at about 4,140 pounds and it has a pretty short wheelbase. Opening up the door, there's like really nice stitching on the door, some suede type material on the center. So there's a very nice contrast, very upscale steering wheel. And we have digital instrument panel and infotainment. The door cards, you have storage and your usual amenities. Manual sits on this one. I chose to review a base GT model. That way I can experience the cheapest version. Digital instrument panel and you have a descent screen up here. Um, overall feel it looks really high end it looks luxurious for a dodge to be honest i'm not trying to say dodge being cheap but you know back in the day neons were <laughs> made really cheaply and um, this is where you'd have a wireless charger and traditional shifter 
your start stop button this is your auto start e-brake the overall feel is really nice i like the stitching on the dash the way this looks is for 31,000 what can you get for 31,000 dollars these days not much So we're setting off here and um, on acceleration, you could definitely tell it's a four cylinder. You can hear the growl of the engine. It, the acceleration is decent. I'll, I don't know the exact specs, but I'll post it up here. Um, right here, while waiting for the light, we have some steering wheel controls, manual HVAC buttons, and we also have screen. So I, I really like the mix of um, digital and physical controls. That kind of like makes me feel good, and like I'm kind of in control. So let's listen here. All right, we're hitting some bumpy roads. Um, you could feel a little jarring, but it's comfortable. The seats feel really good and they're supportive. I don't know, I've driven a lot of Civics and Toyota Corollas and I think for this price this is um, well up there. So um, basically we want to find out why are the sales so slow on this car and that's what I want to find out today. So we'll look at other factors that affect this car and maybe not many people know about it. Standard safety features on the base model include adaptive speed control, automatic e-brake hold, blind spot and cross path traffic detection, traffic sign recognition, keyless entry, and more. You could always opt for more premium features. On the entertainment side, you get Uconnect 5 with a 10.25 inch touchscreen. 4G LTE Wi-Fi hotspot, Apple CarPlay, and Google Android Auto. We have two cup holders, an uh, armrest. It's not very big, but you guys could share. And a very teeny, teeny storage. I'm not sure what you'll put in here. Oh, it's my hand belly fits in there. But I'm very impressed with the seats. All right, let me see how I fit back here. I'm sitting behind myself and my knees touch, but it's not a big deal. Like I, I could just kind of open up my legs and if there's nobody here, I'll be fine for a very long trip. Vegas road trip. Cup holders back here in this pull down armrest. And we do have, what is this here? We have a pass-through, so if you're carrying long items, it won't be an issue. And I'm pretty sure you could fold this seat too. Sitting for five, you have a small vent back here, but it is multi-directional, so both two people could share. There's a USB-A and USB-C charge port back here. Very generous headroom for usually my head touch in the back of smaller vehicles like that coming up back let me try to open up the trunk this is not powered and you have a decent trunk it's not huge it's decent tie down points here what's down here Ooh. so um it's in the shape of a spare but we have no spare back here so maybe you have some run flats um, I can see there's a air compressor here, so that's just a tire repair kit But you could fit a lot of items back here. So that trunk just gets a lot bigger back here You also have a 12 volt cigarette style uh, Outlet I guess that's to put um, plug in your air compressor You have this removable tray here or a cover to conceal your valuables um, when you're out at the mall shopping. So here we see the seats fold, the, the rear seats fold 60-40. It's not perfectly flat, 
but it's very useful when you're carrying large items. No storage, a cubby to carry your water, speakers. I really like the hood accents up here. Um, it goes through, so maybe they're functional hood scoops, but it's a very nice touch. You have your battery, your turbocharger is right up here, your oil, everything is just right here. So this, is, this engine seems like it's very serviceable, especially if you uh, do it yourself, uh, then you won't have any issues. Everything's right there. I really like that setup. So the optional equipment this has was the the paint, which is six hundred dollars. Um, customer preferred f package, which cold weather package, heated front seats, remote start. That was four ninety five. The GT blacktop uh, track package bundle. That's uh, thirty nine hundred, basically four thousand dollars. Black Alcantara, Inox steel doll seals, gloss black painted mirror caps. Dark Hornet badge, gloss black painted. So basically a sports package for $4,000. You literally could leave all of these out. So with a starting price of about $31,000 with all wheel drive for a small SUV. Why isn't this car flying off the shelf? Well, you could see here, this thing quickly goes up to about $37,000. And a lot of the other ones on the lot, they're about 40. If you go to the RT, starts around 40. And then they click quickly go up to $47,000, $50,000. So you can see this is way too expensive for what it offers. And why wouldn't I go with a Subaru Crosstrek? For about $25,000 base price if I want an all-wheel drive or a Toyota RAV4 hybrid with its renowned reliability or a Honda CRV. And now you start to see the problem with this car. Yes, it's decent, but it already has electrical problems and other reliability concerns. So people that support Dodge or the Dodge fans, they're saddened by the screaming Hellcat engines going away. And now, this is all we have to look forward to. They were not gonna purchase this. And somebody that wants a small SUV, cheap, reliable, fuel efficient, I think they will put their money somewhere else. It's a decent car, but I think it kind of missed the mark. Thank you, like and subscribe.